three, two, one. I love that shit. Hey. Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally deciding on the movie you were going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your house, but there was something truly special about making that trip as a child, picking a movie out by hand, and using your Christmas bonus check to pay for it. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte, and joining me as always, the jolliest bunch of assholes this side of the nuthouse, Sean Pryor and AJ Vince. How the heck are you? Just give me my goddamn bonus. I'll be fine. Yeah, dude. Just give me my bonus. I'll be fine. I need that stimmy real bad. Jelly of the Month Club. That's the gift that keeps on giving (laughs) all year. (laughs) Jelly my finances. (laughs) God damn it. Well, we're delighted to have you here with us today, everybody around the world. If you're new to the podcast, you're at the beginning of an episode where we take a classic movie that you loved from childhood and give you every single bit of information you could ever need about the movie while dissecting it scene by scene. Stay tuned for all the fun, but before we get started, I want to tell you a few ways to support the podcast and all of these amazing efforts that we do for you every week. Way number one to support us, we have a voicemail. We love hearing from you. Flat out, we love hearing your sexy voices. You call 319 Eight zero four ninety five ninety six. Oh, it's in the show description. Yeah, you can click on it in case you Le- didn't hear that one. Leave us a message <laughs> if you want. Here's today's message. Hey, this is Brett from Fairfield, Illinois, and I was born in nineteen eighty one. So, a lot of these movies you guys talk about stuff's right in my wheelhouse. And uh, we had HBO when I was a kid because the neighbor across the street he climbed up the pole out there and he he jimmied with the wires. <laughs> <laughs> they had free cable at their house, and we got free HBO to keep our mouth shut about it. Yep. Oh, it worked out really shut great. Shut your mouth. So I got to see all these classic movies back in the day. So about Uncle Buck. Man, oh. I loved that movie as a kid. I just thought that was pretty cool. But John Candy, well, he was a dandy. I mean, he just killed it and everything he was in. And Uncle Buck there, that one scene in the uh, principal's office, I mean, that's a classic scene. But, you know, he, he was real good about subtleties. She was, like, introducing herself. You know, I'm the assistant vice principal or you know, it's on that door right there. And he just kind of stops and slowly <laughs> rotates his head around and looks at the door. He's like, this door? <laughs> it just shows how, how good of an actor he really was. You know, he didn't have to say anything to make something good. But uh, anyway, you guys have a good one. And uh, I'll see you on down the dusty trail. Thanks, man. Awesome. Dude, thank you so much. Thank you. I pretty much nailed it. Yeah, your appreciation yeah. for Uncle Buck <laughs> is just everything I want in a phone call. So your candy dandy. You, dandy you, candy. You put a rhyme in there. I'm I'm you're candy number one. Candy makes you dandy. Yeah. <laughs> what a what a man. Yeah. That's I mean, it, if he's not this patron saint of this podcast, I don't know who is. Yeah. So. He thank is. you. It's official. It's official. Yeah. There thank, you go. Thank you so much for taking the time to call in. Seriously. Yeah. Hell yeah. And if you don't leave us a voicemail, but you just want to hook us up with something else, we love reviews. We love when you subscribe to the podcast platform of your choice. Uh, leave us a review. We have a segment called Review Time. Review Time. <laughs> this is called Heckin' Hilarious <laughs> from Jen, not Jen. J E N, not J E N N. Get it? Okay. I got you. Just want to make sure you understood. Yep. Uh, it says, Wait. I, Yeah, I got it. <laughs> I swear you read my brain. Lots of memories I forgot I even had, like rollerblading with hockey sticks in the street because we were obsessed with the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> my face hurts smiling over AJ's laugh. It's pure happiness. <laughs> I agree with you on that one. There you go. <laughs> love, yeah, your com- one. love your camaraderie in the movies you picked. Would love to hear you review Don't Tell Mom the Babysitter's Dead or Toy Soldiers. Thanks Ooh, for the laugh, guys. Nice. Hell yeah. I think those are two pretty good ones. I, I think like those that. have to be Toy covered. Soldiers. Okay. Yeah, yeah. dude. So that's, that's a that's a Joe Dante movie right there. We gotta get another one of those in there. Mm. Yeah, if you're leaving a review or voicemail, tell us tell us some movies you want to suggest. Absolutely. You never know we might hit them. And the final way to support us, um, check out our Patreon. We've got a lot of cool stuff going on there. Patreon.com slash Confused Breakfast. Uh, there's like over 15 hours of audio now. And now that we are YouTubing, Whoa. you guys, you're going to get first Whoa. dibs at uh, all these episodes. I don't know why people want to see our face, but they do. Totally fine. I did, understand. Did people ask for it? I don't know. If they, they did. Could. No, they did. Oh, okay, cool. They're like, oh, I think I, I think those guys probably look awesome. <laughs> those guys are probably really handsome. I've seen comments on, your, on your beard. So, 
Yeah. See this thing, guys? Look oh, at yeah. that. He <laughs> scrapes against his microphone. <laughs> Jesus. That's some good ASMR right there. <laughs> Leaves well, yeah. the ladies moist and wanting. <laughs> Check us out. Join up. Join all the Ooh. other the, uh, the other patrons on there. We, we love having you and interacting every week. But, uh, boys, I say it's time to introduce today's movie. On this episode, we discuss one of the most popular Christmas movies of all time, a movie that single-handedly taught us everything we know about exterior illumination, mm. women's lingerie, can't remember the joke I was going to say there. <laughs> the perils of corporate America and handling an RV septic tank. We are, of course, talking about 1989's National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I was going to say... I was going to say, after women's lingerie, I was going to say, can't see the can't line. Can't see the can't line. AJ. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> That's fun. That's really I, That was fun. I should have wrote it down. <laughs> I knew that was what you were going to say afterwards, and then you hit the sound bite. That's okay. Everybody can shut up. We'll get in there. For, for, those, for those of you looking to get a he refresher. He means me. Yeah. For those looking to get a refresher on the movie quick, I found it on HBO Max. That's if you right. have that subscription. Um, this was at the time of recording, early December 2021, so I mm-hmm. wish you well. Mm. But first things first, we'd like to get the pertinent Important details in the movie, Sean. Let's do it. Let's do it. Produced by John Hughes and Tom Jacobson. Written by John Hughes. Edited by Gerald Greenberg and Michael Stevenson. Cinematography by Thomas Ackerman. Music by Angelo Bettelamenti. He's a great composer. He does, cool. a, he does a lot of uh, David Lynch stuff. Oh, so wow. Wow. He's, he's, it's weird that he's doing this movie. Oh, wow. Uh, directed by Jeremiah Chechik. Chechik? Chechik? Chechik. So... Uh, the you only got other, it. The only other notable movie that I could <laughs> see that he did was Benny and June, which is a, kind of a cool movie. But other than that, it's like direct-to-video kind of stuff. So I get, I get it. Here's the cast. Chevy Chase, Beverly D'Angelo, Juliette Lewis, Johnny Galecki, Galicki, John Randolph, Diane Ladd, E.G. Marshall, Doris Roberts, Julie Louis Dreyfus, William Hickey, Mae Questel, Ellen Latson, Brian Doyle Murray, Cody Berger, Sam McMurray, and Randy Quaid. We know, we know Cody, Cody Berger. Cody That's Berger. Right. We already know some Cody Berger. Oh, He's yeah. in Heavyweights, baby. Yeah, I, baby. I saw that name. I'm like, I know that name. <laughs> you can't yep. forget a guy named Cody Berger. Not at all. <laughs> Let alone Steve Hot Dog. Um, <laughs> what? I don't know. <laughs> Originally a short story created by John Hughes for National Lampoon's Magazine. All legit. Uh, in a 1980 issue uh, entitled Christmas 59. Um, the previous installment was Vacation 58, which the first film was actually based off of. Mm-hmm. So the, vaga- the Vacation series was based off like his stories, um, Vacation 58 being like pretty much taken, or the movie taken from that story. Same with here with uh, Christmas 59. The studio that made the film came to Hughes begging for another Christmas story, Christmas story <laughs> from him to produce into a movie. Having a good idea for another one, Hughes agreed. Chris Columbus was hired to direct the film, but after a couple meetings with Chevy Chase, he said he couldn't work with him. Understandable. He's Renowned apparently to be an tough asshole. to work with. <laughs> uh, feeling bad, Hughes later gave Columbus a script for none other than Home Alone. Wow. Mm. Uh, principal photography began on March 27, 1989 in Summit County, Colorado. Other filming locations included Breckenridge, Silverthorne, uh, and Frisco. Production moved to Burbank, California for most of the interior scenes. Uh, the movie debuted at number two, making eleven point seven million dollars. Decent, decent funds. Not too bad. I think it was this movie that was like the only Christmas movie that year, along with like a movie called Prancer. Okay. And so this was like just what they so had to work just, for. Yeah, so, they yeah. got lucky. They're yeah. like, well, so that's what we're gonna watch. Yeah. Prancer blew this out of the water. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> and just dominated. Okay, mm-hmm. gotcha. Well, gotcha. next, we'd like to give the audience a little insight into what we thought about the movie the first time we saw it. AJ, I'm going to go to you, man. What do you remember about this movie the first time you saw it, and what was your rating? So, uh, I I only caught pieces and parts of this, and then it, I'll tell you this. It, it certainly became a bit of a Christmas tradition for my wife and I, setting up our Christmas tree. But really, the first time seeing it, I would probably have to say, uh, jokes over my head, um, and my it was it was on a DVD that we we had in playing during holiday time, mm. and my brother Ray was just all about this. But big, my mom was also a big vacation movie oh, fan. Yeah. National you know. Lampoon. Yep, National Lampoon. And so, so that's why. But for me, it was a lot of background noise, and then the stuff that I did ca- did catch on to. I was like, I was like, yeah, I guess, <laughs> okay. 
Yeah, oh, Chevy Chase. He is funny, but not really this time for me. So for me, I would have to say, honestly, this movie probably sticks somewhere in a 4.1. 4.1 for the age. What about you, Sean? Yeah, kind of the same. I don't, honestly don't think I've seen this movie in its entirety uh, ever until like this watch. Um, I've only like caught it. I've literally caught it like as soon as Cousin Eddie arrives. Yeah. Like that's when it's on yeah. for some reason. Every time I catch it, like my dad will be watching it just randomly and it's like when Cousin Eddie There's arrives. Cousin Eddie. I've never I've never seen the first scene where they're, they're like in the car and everything like that and you think it's a vacation movie. Um yeah, I mean, what I had to think about it, like I thought it was funny, like all the jokes that were happening, and I'm like, but I just don't know the context or anything. Um so I, it's hard to give this movie a rating for back then, but a if, I, if, rating, I, if I had to say, I'd just give it a five just because it's like, oh, Chevy Chase, funny, Christmas, there's eggnog. I like eggnog. No, I hear you, I, man. I'm I'm a, I'm a nine on this. I mean, damn. this was family tradition from mm. day one that I remember. I mean, this was always one of the movies we watched. It's always been played at Christmas for as long as I can remember. It gets the laughs. It's the get everybody together. Like Christmas Eve, we're watching it. Uh, who put in Christmas vacation? Let's go, you know. Well, yeah. I eat my chicken wings. Yeah. <laughs> it's tradition. Yeah, yeah know? chicken wings. That's your tradition. Hell yeah. Like Mom, that. if you're listening, I can't wait for this year. I can't. I love that. Can I, I come? Say, yes, you, you should, come you should bring yeah. some over. I will. But it, put, it just puts me in an absolutely great mood. So I'm going to say it's a nine for me. Wow. Wow. And I've got a little ranking system here where I've been keeping track. So that puts us for preliminary ratings. Let's hear it. That puts us at like, like a 6.03, which is pretty low. That is right below planes and trains and automobiles, right above Goldeneye hmm. for a nostalgic wow. rating. For a nostalgic rating. And we'll see what that post rating is when we get there. Damn. If you haven't listened to those episodes, go check those out. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but before we get into the film review, scene by scene, AJ always hooks us up with some research, uh, ratings, reviews, critical stuff. Mm. Let's figure this out, man. It's the most important time of the episode. Oh. And the first time we get to see it, what do we always do, guys? The, the tomato, tomato meter. meter. Yeah. I, I didn't know we actually put what we do. <laughs> yeah. We do it like a hang time. <laughs> Let's see that. I got you guys to do I it. I feel it's like great. we never did that. <laughs> we never no, did it. It just made us do I'm it. I'm so I don't glad. Know what the fuck happened? <laughs> All right. Well, 67% on the tomato meter. Uh, apparently. Uh, the critics weren't as feeling the vibe, the Christmas spirit. You, you want to know where that puts us in the movies we've done? That's in between yeah. Point Break and Running Man. Wow. For critical reviews. Wow. Weird. Yeah, oh, right? Damn. What about audience score? This is an 86%. 86. So this is uh, close yeah. to where Mike felt. Yeah, uh, right. As far as it goes. I don't know if you've got a little buffer on I that don't have it for that. I got That's the IMDb, okay. though. It's okay. It's all right. You, you, can, you can. It's fine. <laughs> IMDb. Is seven point six. Oh. oh, so seven point six IMDb of the movies we've done. That is tied with Lethal Weapon, Planes, Trains, and Dazed and Confused. Wow. Oh wow. Huh. Just, th- just throwing that out there. Just that it is a tough rating system. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Non disagrees. Gracious. <laughs> uh, I always like to start with some critical reviews and everything. Uh, see where they were coming from. Uh, Variety. Uh, Gave this a pretty a pretty high score. Christmas Vacation is a glowingly goofy homage to the family holidays, a welcome improvement over the last vacation foray. This third outing of the Griswold family is a handsomely wrapped holiday present that should delight family viewers everywhere. Hmm. So, okay. pretty pretty nice. They think it's an improvement over the last one? Over uh, European vacation. I think it is. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So, this is number th- the third installment, so. they said. Might and be. European Vacation was apparently not as well received as gotcha. number one. But so. number one. <laughs> well, number one. Won't. Yeah, I we mean, all know. You can't beat it. There you go. Because John Candy was in it. So. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, J. Carr had something else to say. He was from the Boston Globe. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation is yet another factory product that plays more like a marketing strategy than a comedy. Like the other farces bearing the National Lampoon brand label, it's a comedy of obliviousness. So they think it's just out there to promote national lampoons and that's it basically i really i mean did chicago, they have action figures I, like chicago bears yeah. hat yeah i guess all that's that about it they're just plugging stuff the whole time i guess i don't know <laughs> how about this this is a one star review uh that i pulled from google uh this movie pro- promotes a buffoonish sexist disgusting man who doesn't listen to anyone <laughs> Despite repeated requests by his wife and kids to take a chill pill, he ignores all of them in search of the perfect family holiday. 
resulted in the discomfort and unhappiness of everyone around him. I literally could not enjoy any of the humor simply because this pig is idolized as the ideal family man, despite his complete disregard for others' well others' well being. It's utterly repulsive. You realize that's that's like why it's funny though. <laughs> Like so, you do get the joke. Like it's you do get it. You just <laughs> don't think it's funny, and that's fine. It's just, but all right, <laughs> all right. But, but thank God she wrote that review. Though. Oh yeah, thank uh, God needed that. A little bit of a higher note here. Uh, five stars. Uh, if the movie is funny, it's good. This movie is very funny and fun to watch. <laughs> Every part of it is funny, and that is a good thing. <laughs> That's my kind of review right yeah, there. I know. <laughs> Who wrote that? Raj? Straightforward to the Simple point. To no, the this point. was uh, Bryson. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God. He, he's six. <laughs> that was 11 months ago. <laughs> Man, this movie Wait, was wait, funny. wait. Hold on. 11 months ago? <laughs> it was 11 months ago. <laughs> that means it was like October <laughs> of 2020? Basically. Okay, never mind. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to point that out there. The tree lit on fire. This is for real funny. Oh, <laughs> Dude, the cat died. The cat, the cat blew up. Fri- fried <laughs> pussy cat. It's really funny. <laughs> uh, Shooterful. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's poopy. Uh-huh. All right, I got one more for you. This is another one Thank star <laughs> coming through. Uh, also 11 months ago, by the way. What the What's going on? Uh, Mitchell got really upset with this. He said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we all know Mitchell. <laughs> I was expecting to see a movie about vacations. There were no beaches, hot chicks, or bikinis to see. <laughs> it was pretty boring overall, and I really wanted hot people in swimsuits to show up on screen. <laughs> One star. Hey, there was there, there was a scene with wim, hot You're right. women in bathing suits. See? I, I don't know what this guy's talking about. I don't about. think he made it all the way through. It's like, oh, now this movie's getting good, and then it just ends. He's like, oh, it was a dream? Fuck this. <laughs> yeah. There's snow everywhere. That was Wait, fake. so they weren't real? They were dream boob? <laughs> Damn it. Fake side boob? <laughs> fake side boob. Dream side boob doesn't count. No, nope, no, 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 no. <laughs> hey, everybody. It is Mike from the Confused Breakfast Podcast, and I really wanted to give a shout out to our sponsor, our favorite whiskey in the entire world, the coming from Cedar Ridge Distillery. Mm. They are located in our backyard in Swisher, Iowa. Cedar Ridge is one of the fastest growing whiskey companies in America. They were named Distillery of the Year in 2017. God, it's so fucking... I just like looking mm, at the bottle. So good. We are huge fans of all their delicious products, including the quintessential American single malt, their whiskey collaboration with Slipknot. Fuck yeah, people equal shit, dude. Which is actually a bourbon and a rye mixed together. Who does that? What? Slipknot. That's what I'm saying. They're crazy. And of course, uh, the flagship bourbon, which is my go-to. Just look at this little neat glass right here. Ooh. That's what I'm sipping on right now. In fact, yeah. let me take a sip. Some skis. Get it, Mike. Good God. <sighs> Oh, yeah. Yes. If you're in Iowa or around the Midwest, you can likely find some at your favorite local establishments. If you want to give it a shot but are elsewhere in the country, you can order online at cedarridgewhiskey.com. Trust us. We have not steered you wrong with anything we have done. Ever. 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 If you or someone special in your life loves whiskey, order some now. You will not be disappointed. Enjoy responsibly. I have a driver who takes me home after these episodes, so that's the best part. There you yeah. go. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. 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 Well, my dudes, what do you say we dive right into the holiday season by trying to plan the perfect confused breakfast Christmas and quickly oh, yeah. realizing that perfect is impossible, especially when your extended family is involved. Not since Bing Crosby tap dance with Danny fucking K has anyone had as much fun as we're about to have. Hallelujah. Holy shit. Where's the Tylenol? Here we go. Merry Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> Chicago area resident Clark Griswold plans to have a great Christmas with his entire family. He gathers his wife, Ellen, daughter, Audrey, and son, Rusty, and drives out to the country to find a tree. After walking through the snow for hours, Clark picks out the largest tree he can find, realizing too late that they did not bring any tools to cut the tree down. They are forced to uproot it instead before driving home with the tree strapped to the roof of their car. What do you think about these intro titles? Sean, I would normally hate this so much, <laughs> but it's Christmas time and like the music <laughs> and the vibes. And I'm just like, dee, 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 here we Christmas go. Vacation. I was immediately like in the mood going. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was into it. I, I guess I was at first. <laughs> like <laughs> I liked I liked all the animation and everything like that. I'm like, oh, that's fun. It's like a National Lampoon's kind of like if it was like animated but you know drawn but then animated on the on the screen whatever um i watched this a second time and then that song just got <laughs> real fucking old ready christmas vacation christmas vacation 
like. <laughs> No, I don't like it. Come on, man. Okay, it's okay. Come on, I man. I it's don't. okay, man. <laughs> like it's just, it's so like cheesy '80s to me. Like if they ju- if they just had like a a romp and stomping like kind of bluesy Christmas song, like rock and roll Christmas song, I would have been a little like way better with that. But who sang that? Does anybody know? Oh, I I, th- I feel like I went to go look it up, and then I just got less disinterested. It's like a, yeah, nobody cares. It's <laughs> like a Net Benning or something. I know that's Cindy Lauper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. I'm uh, I just didn't didn't vibe with me. Sorry, guys. Well, then, okay, let's move Let's move the conversation along. Please. I'll get away from this real quick. <laughs> I, I want to bring up a point that I feel that our man, John Candy, John Candy. Chet Ripley, is Ooh. a better father than Clark Griswold. Oh, yeah. And oh, I think yeah. this scene is an important part because Chet's kids are actually loving on their dad and, like, singing along to oh, the yeah. intro song. 100%. But, like, Clark's kids hate his guts. Right. They're just in the back going, "Oh my god, I hate this car ride." There's yeah. like, there's like annoying dad, and then there's like, I despise everything. Like, you get us into the most bullshit that I could ever even imagine, <laughs> and we have to dig ourselves out of it. You, yeah. you can't even figure out a way, you know? Yeah. Like, I, I can see that they like the stain on their face for their father. It's yeah. striking. I do like the idea that that this is all this is all part of the John Hughes uh, universe. Yep. And that they do live in the same world, and that like maybe they're, they're obviously in the Midwest. Like it's they may have crossed paths. Yeah, like they've yeah. definitely crossed paths. Like in like like they go to the same tree farm. They're kind of the same guy. They want to ha- provide this awesome memory for their children yeah. and their yeah. family. Yeah, but you know, like Chet's just a better guy. About he's it. just better. At Why it. are we talking about great outdoors? I don't know. I think it's I brought such that a better up, movie. <laughs> great. Um, <laughs> Hey kids, look a deer. Yeah. <laughs> like this I is gotta, road rage at its finest, yes, it Vince. Is. It's this so is good. subtle road rage at its finest, and I love it so much because how, don't, don't you can't tell me that almost every single person has not been in this same situation. You're just like <laughs> this jerk, and you know what? No, I'm not gonna. It's like this this bullshit like road vigilanteism that you think you own. You're from here, you know this lane ends. I'm yeah. not fucking getting over for you. Yeah, so it's like you're so irritated by the people around you, and you know what? If that guy was in front of you and you were speeding up on him, then he'd be just as pissed for the opposite reason. Oh, yeah. You know, so it's just road rage at its finest. Yeah. (laughs) Do you think that the Fast and the Furious stole this idea? 100%. (laughs) Yes. I mean, it's the same thing. They're like, oh, I'm just going to pull the car underneath the semi and everything's going to be fine. (laughs) Makes sense. It's such like an oversight. (laughs) And like uh, what Russ can see it from a mile away. He's like, dad, Uh, dad, don't. And he kind of turns. He just goes, "Mm." Yeah, <laughs> he's just like he doesn't look, look over. He just I goes. I don't give a fuck about anything. <laughs> 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 just can't like. And then, so I think that's uh, what's cool about that semi is it's the same semi in uh, Big Little Big Trouble in Little China oh, wait, wait, that uh, Kurt Russell drives. I think really? it's the, I think it's the same one that they used. Is what I read. The the, the truck mm-hmm. or whatever the, the semi. Did it have logs mm-hmm. on it? Uh, no, I might have like you're talking about like the truck. Yeah, just like okay. the the rig itself. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. okay so okay. there's a little fun fact that okay. I like. Interesting. Thanks, man. Yeah. yeah. Do you think I, I can't remember European vacation or uh, Vegas vacation? But I know at least in the first vacation, yeah, his car is airborne at some point with his with his family in it. And mm-hmm. again, oh, absolutely, it also happens in Christmas vacation. Yeah. It's fu- it's so funny to me though when it does crash and Audrey is like in the front seat going like trying to get out. I, I laugh at that every time. Oh, it made good time. Like maybe <laughs> maybe he's just like really hoping for that uh, that bonus because he destroys everything that he touches. Correct. I mean he just I mean like if he's that far into debt, I mean he's just he's buying cars, which he is. Like those yeah. axles are definitely broken. You know. Yeah that 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 car isn't drivable no <laughs> come on like this is not that's not drivable at this point no wonder they had to walk all the way out there not because it is waist deep snow that he's just parading his kids and, and wife through that's obnoxious but but there's no way that car would have it, it, not even a shot nope no there's no way well that explains because he is we understand this man is in deep debt uh, so maybe that's why he's not purchasing a Christmas tree from the Christmas tree lot that he pulls up into <laughs> that's a good point that's an Is excellent that point. Yeah, like he's they're they're trekking out into the wilderness. You can yeah. just buy. You can just like what twenty bucks? I don't know. What's a tree now? There's, Pretty sure this is how the Donner Party got fucked. Okay. Yeah, Christmas right, they, tree. They hunting? went out. They went out to look for Christmas trees, and they just got stranded, starting at each other. Yeah. Oh, so. that makes sense. I think it was the same kind of man who would do that too. Who's just like we're we're going out to discover new things, and we're calling this trail the, <laughs> the, the, the what's his name the Chevy Don- Chase Trail. <laughs> 
The Clark Griswold the Trail. The Clark Griswold Trail. <laughs> Paving new trails. Yeah, it's just like uh, it's he's he's so like self centered. <laughs> it's like it and the kids are the kids and wife are just so along with it. It's crazy to me. If there's if there's one thing that does upset me that like adds to the cartoonishness is it's the uh, when they get there it's like Dad, did you bring a saw? Boom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like that sound might. Really upsets me His every facial? time. I thought you'd like that. <laughs> no. His facial reactions are so good, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then it plays the sad version of <laughs> yeah. a "Come, come, let me adore you." Or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, by the way, uprooting that tree in the frozen ground. Oh my god! The man has superheroes. Ten time, ten times harder than walking back and then sawing it down. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. That is not how that's. Have you ever go. tried to pull like a root? Out of the yeah. ground, and you can't pull it, and it's like four <laughs> inches tall. And you're like, yeah. I can't pull this Jesus. tree. Out. Or you start pulling this root, and a tree over here goes <laughs> yeah. into the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Bugs Bunny style. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that best enjoyed with Kith and Kin. Like, I, Kith I do and like kin. when his tongue is stuck, and he's like, the Grithwall <laughs> for the Kith and Kin. kin. <laughs> but uh, so they get home, they get back home, and we get to meet Todd and Margo. <laughs> so I just want to bring this up because yeah. my family's probably listening. My wife, Molly's listening. Okay. We are Todd and Margo. We live in a, <laughs> in a family neighborhood. We do not have kids. Yeah. Everyone has kids around us. Yeah. Our house is like really clean and like contemporary. Everybody else's house is dirty because they've got kids and dogs running around. Yeah. We are Todd and Margo. And I, I'm going to make a pitch as we go along. That like Todd and Margo aren't that bad. Okay. This movie just portrays them as bad people. I feel you. Because Chevy, like Clark Griswold is the bad guy, although he's got that classic line. He comes out looking like yeah. Leatherface. I mean, he looks like a serial killer. He's got his hockey mask on. He's got his... I loved it. It's beautiful, right? Oh, yeah. And he even does that sideways look. Yeah. And he's like, where are you going to put a tree that big? Why don't you bend over and I'll show you. <laughs> Got a lot of nerve talking to me like that. I wasn't talking to you. Wasn't uh, talking to you. That was one of the things that went right over right. my head as a kid. Yeah. But that is like, how dare you? How dare you say that to, to your neighbor? I right. mean, there's to your woman neighbor. There exactly. seems to be like, there, I hope there's any way, like a lot of history there. But like just blatant out, blatantly saying that to somebody yeah. that they don't really know that much is pretty crazy. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think you're right about about them. But they are yuppie and, and completely and just so. What are you saying about me and my wife? Just gross and yuppie. And, yeah. <laughs> but you have to <laughs> <laughs> just dancing over the question. <laughs> you do have to realize, like they aren't like going out of their way to get into like like shenanigans against the Griswolds. They're just literally minding their own business most of oh, the they, time. They unfortunately live next door. That's, Except that's for the yeah, one time all he kind of calls over to Griswold about <laughs> the tree. <laughs> yeah, and like, yeah, it is obnoxious. It's just a funny joke. Really. It's like, it's like, it's that's banter between neighbors. But overall, you're kind of right. Those guys don't really like make a, make a case to be like hated on. They're not the Clopex. Yeah, we, they're not we, the Clopex. Can we just put it out that <laughs> right? <laughs> And the Clopex didn't do anything wrong but kill people. I yeah. Mean, who cares yeah. about that? Let's be honest. I mean, they Come didn't on. really do much in that neighborhood. In that neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. right. Correct. Right. They, they, were were actually, they weren't bothering everybody, but changing the tides of the weather, that's really all they did. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's a good point. They yeah. definitely had some influence on the moon and yeah. the tides. It's kind of weird. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So the next day, the Griswold family is at a busy department store buying Christmas presents. Clark can be seen hitting on department store Mary in front of his son, Rusty. Soon after, both Clark and, and Ellen's parents arrive for Christmas, but their bickering quickly begins to annoy the family. Clark begins decorating the exterior of the house with an ungodly amount of Christmas lights. His first attempt at setting the lights up ends in near disaster with several broken windows. Got to. Uh, I, I like um, when he's in his work place of work or whatever, and the boss is coming to Mr. Shirley, Mr. Shirley, who is the uh, pinball king of in Wayne's World, right? The <laughs> yeah, he is. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. The, he's, he's the he's um, uh, Noah's Ark. Noah's Ark. No, Noah's that's Arcade. not Brian Doyle Murray. Oh, it, not not Brian Do- Doyle Murray. But oh, you're talking about somebody else. His boss. Br- yeah, Brian Doyle Murray. Is that his name? Yeah, yeah. That's him then. No. Oh, oh yeah. we're getting a feed on this. Are right, you you feed you feed this out? Are you I talking about go. his? Are you talking about his friend? No, I'm talking about his boss, Mr. Shirley. Okay, is Brian Doyle Murray? It is. Yeah, but he's in. He's in the pinball guy. He's Noah's. Like, Ar- he's Noah no, from he's Noah's not. Arcade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is, bro. What's the matter with me? <laughs> yeah. How'd you not see right, this? Fine, I'm not the host anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that scene's fantastic, though. It's great. And his friend. I one one more thing about his friend is that he's in Raising Bill. Arizona, and yeah. it's, he's so fucking good in that. If you want like good, like he's he plays pretty much cousin Eddie in Raising Arizona, and I 
dare say that he might do a little bit better. Wow. So Those, them's fighting words for a lot of it people. It is. Probably. That's fine. Come at me. Let's go. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, his the, the his confrontation with all of his like higher ups. It looks like a, like a literal military march. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, like, like all of his minions are con- are like protecting the king, yes. pretty much. <laughs> it's so and it, funny. And it, it's just corporate America, yeah. especially back ah, in the dude. day where he where he's like, "Hey, we were flattered. You remembered us." And the boss, yeah. like, "What are you talking about?" And the guy goes, "Corporate cards." Corporate cards. But then he gives him the look, like, "Why did you send out corporate cards?" <laughs> yeah, yeah, no <laughs> shit. Stupid ass kid. Oh my gosh, yeah. Oh god. And he even so, I counted. Um, Frank Shirley calls him a different name, like throughout the whole movie. <laughs> he called instead of Clark, he called him Mark, Bill, Greaseball, Griswold, or Grisball, and Carl. <laughs> Carl <laughs> throughout the right. whole movie. I think Carl's at the end too, where yeah, he's Carl's like, at the end. <laughs> he's, he's even, come around. <laughs> but even the, like, we laugh so hard at the end. Like he he doesn't care about the minions. He's a like, kiss my ass, kiss my ass, yeah, Merry, kiss Christmas. His Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, <laughs> kiss his ass, kiss Happy, his Hanukkah. <laughs> Happy Hanukkah, Happy <laughs> Hanukkah. <laughs> oh man but i miss like the old days what some of these christmas movies do for me is they remind me of like the the old days of like the in-person shopping i yeah, don't know why that yeah. excites me so much it like yeah. where you had to go buy presents every day it's just amazon packages at my house and, yeah. and like yeah. we don't go anywhere i know I, I like that that hustle and bustle of the holiday season and like oh cool the displays and I love that too. So here's what I want. I want a shuttle that will take me to the mall okay. and then get me out of the mall. Okay. That you can drink in. It, yeah, and that I could also drink at. That, that has like a like awesome. a dry bar. Why don't we just start this service? Let's we do just that. created a This is our last podcast mall. episode, you guys. Right, fantastic. Bye. Bye. We'll get this finished up. Uh, <laughs> but that is what I want because the parking lot is the worst fucking thing on earth at any place where you have to go Christmas shopping. That's the worst part of it. But yes, you're absolutely right. I would I love going in and finding like finding stuff and like oh, we don't have it here, but we can get it there. Like I I love that kind of like little bit of little bit of yeah. holiday anxiety injected in there. I like that. And popping by the lingerie counter and yeah. stuff like that. Got too. to. Oh Every yeah, time. you know. Yeah. I mean, that's just where I go when like when I'm by myself, I just you know, I go there. <laughs> I I call, call me crazy. Maybe maybe this is the nostalgia <laughs> speaking. So I'm going to ask this to Sean like that that interaction with Chevy Chase and Mary is like hilarious to me. It's pretty good. I, like, <laughs> I don't, <dude. laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't have a problem with it or anything like that. Like, that's not it or anything. But it's it is just like, oh, the eighties. Yeah. Oh, the eighties where you could just blatantly hit on somebody and not. I don't have a lot. And forget about that you even have a wife at all. <laughs> like he does this in vacation, obviously. And I know oh, they're yeah. like calling back to it, which is funny, but it's just like okay. <laughs> I, I just, I don't know. I just laugh at that. I just have to say, I mean, he is married to Beverly D'Angelo. Yes! Beverly D'Angelo. Which, which, like, which that part blows my mind, she's if anything. still hot. Yeah. She's, like, stunning in this. And I like, don't know if she's dead or not, but if be. she is, she's hot. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's on Cameo. Okay, cool. Yeah, she's alive and well. But, like. Maybe not well. But. You, you mean to tell me, like. Like what's what problems are happening at home that you feel like this is a necessary <laughs> release? Thank you for saying. That. Beverly D'Angelo like, looks ten times better than she does. If we're talking like gross, gross say. man stuff, I'm sorry. I don't know, man. I, <sighs> that's that's where I'm at. It's just like like totally caught me off guard that you're just like, oh, you're gonna you need to do this. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. But him stuttering over his words and everything like that yeah. is is like Hoot, really good. Hooter, hotter than they are. <laughs> not, not that I have a log. Not in the sense you think I have a log. <laughs> not, no. Can no. I take something out for you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my name. No shit. No that's shit. My favorite fucking thing. Is I love that because he's settled that's my in. Name. He's, no settled, shit. he's settled in completely at this no point. Shit. Now we're now we're full on flirting at this point. He's he's there for at least another hour before Russ comes yeah. in. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You see, see that Russ? You can't even see the line. Nope. Can't even see it. <laughs> oh, it's funny. But then, of course, uh, Clark Clark and Ellen's parents arrive in that like ominous doorbell that keeps getting yes. deeper every time. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's a great it's a great way to show like th- that that happens. But I love again it, it brings up some holiday th- joyous moments of like when yeah. the family comes over and that moment when the door opens and it's like Merry Christmas yes. and we got presents. It, th- this movie does touch on some of those parts of the holiday season. That's awesome. Absolutely, know? it does it does do that pretty well. And if you notice the the camera is pretty locked off this entire movie until this scene like. And they, they portray it more as like it's a hectic family, yeah. obviously, which it can be. Uh, but, you know, yeah, it's all handheld at this point, and it's just kind of creates a little bit more chaos. Uh, I have to say, though, like a lot of the editing, a lot of the like the shot choices and stuff like that, to me, a lot of it lingers 
for a little too long here and there. Like I noticed like the camera shaking a little bit more. I'm like, okay, well I know what they're getting at. Like that's cool. But and then it just kind of like lingers on and on and on. And I know that like greeting can be like pretty uh long, I guess. It's like just getting out of the foyer of the house yeah. is can be like oh, a, yeah. a whole thing. The Iowa hello and Iowa goodbye <laughs> yeah, for exactly. us. We all know what that is in Iowa. And it's it's you have to start your goodbyes about forty five minutes early. Yeah. To make sure you get to everybody and you, you never you, – because and one conversation is going to turn into like 15 minutes. Yep. Oh, we should do that. Yeah, we should. Oh, did you do Why this Why don't we thing? hang out? We should get together. <laughs> we're not that far. No. And that, that kind of stuff happens, and you, you mean gonna, it. We're going to finish that song? We think we should finish that song. Yeah, we should. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that one seems personal, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yes, I know exactly what you're saying. It's like it's like those lingering like hellos and goodbyes. Yeah. It's like yeah. it's part of that hectic uh, holiday season, and that's the thing. I I think back to this, and I think about when either we would we would be uh, inviting people in, like uh, your your family's hosting, or like you'd go to your grandparents and they're hosting, and uh, and kind of the chaos that ensues, and like just how probably oblivious I was as a kid. Mm -hmm. And my parents are probably just in the front seats, just like steaming mad at each other, annoyed with us. Like that. We had, it took so long to get here. We don't know when, like we're, we're probably like next to last to show up. (laughs) Like this is what's (laughs) happening. And like, I have no idea. I'm just playing on my game boy in the back seat. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm doing. And then when you get there, you go to like where the kids place is like where, where they're playing yeah. halo you know yeah, like, yeah. You, you don't you don't mingle and, and like greet everybody you just you go straight to the kids place yeah at least i did anyway well th- yeah we, it was uh, kids like basically went downstairs and then the yeah. adults were upstairs and just probably just started drinking oh yeah <laughs> but it's also it's also that it's also they were like drinking that, on the way it was the 80s bro. <laughs> yeah, that's right <laughs> it's also that kind of family where they get way too close to your face yeah. <laughs> it's like oh it's just it's just like so personal it's like yeah i love you but it's just like ah <laughs> Your breath has always stank, man. I just hasn't changed since last year. <laughs> and, and the overly personal information comes right out, right out our way. Like I have hemorrhoids. Can you <laughs> believe it? It's like I, we, you just walked in the door. We can talk about this later. <laughs> oh my God, how have you been? Well, still dealing with that foot fungus, but you know how it is. That's no, great. I don't. It's like <laughs> you can see the kid too. He's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh the God, no! Oh, why are your shoes off? Okay. <laughs> Uh, so so after they settle in, we get into like the the start of the Christmas lighting, right? Of That's the, right. Of the yeah. house, and like I look at it a lot differently as an adult, as a homeowner. I'm like, why is he? Who told him to staple these? To oh the my house? god, I know. And and like, <laughs> how do you get those? Out? Does this void insurance? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Like I have so many questions oh about god, why dude. he did what he did. It's it's really hard to look at when you like, you're, and he's just doing it willy nilly. <laughs> he's just like turn turn yeah, turn turn. Dude, like shooting that thing off, like, like you think you'd have a system, like yeah, one yeah. every like two lights or every something like that. Five <laughs> <lights>. <laughs> boom, 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 Maybe boom. he knows he's replacing his roof next year, right? <laughs> so he's just like whatever. Yeah, these gutters don't pull are the gonna come off anyways. So, <laughs> but that some of this, some of the physical comedy of Chevy Chase is is what I do like about him. Yeah. yeah. Some of the 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 things he does without saying anything, like the two things he he fall the ladder falls down. Yeah, and he does this thing where he looks around and he goes, "Hmm, yeah, I meant to do that." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and even even at the top when he when he falls behind the ladder and it's he does that thing with he does that thing with his arm where he he keeps going up yeah. under up under up <laughs> that, reaches those, for the sleeve that came off. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that uh, that is what I love most about Chevy Chase. I think is that kind of physical humor. Yeah, yeah, does. definitely. Yeah. He's like extremely aware of like everything that's on screen while he's on screen as well. So he's up, like manipulating everything to make yes. it even like more funny. Yeah. yeah, and it's just I don't know if anybody else could really see that besides yeah. Chevy Chase. Oh, and, and I do have a question for you guys. You know, you guys are smart. You're like uh, sure. engineer type Thanks. guys. You know about audio stuff. What <laughs> fucking kind of stereo did Todd have? <laughs> what the know. fuck, dude? What, like he goes, something, break, something broke the window. Something broke the stereo. And he's looking at all these boxes. This looks like a few PS3s they or something. They look like answering like, machines. <laughs> yeah. or like, like Answering machines are like, it was like he, he put music on Betamax. <laughs> 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 I don't know how the fuck you do he's, that? And he's like <laughs> taking pieces and kind of putting them back. Like, yeah. I have no clue what a stereo. <laughs> that was 
<laughs> well, something had to break the window. What do you, well, I don't know what it was. What do you think it was, Todd? I don't know, Marco. <laughs> it's, the, it's, it's potentially one of the most famous quotes of this movie. <laughs> is the, the, why is the carpet all wet, Todd? Todd? I don't know, no, Marco. Marco. I mean, that is, that's almost, I, I, I don't know how you write that and deliver it better <laughs> yeah. than they do. Because that really shows their yuppiness. Of the oh, yes. <laughs> I have the to carpet? say it. Just to remind myself, in my notes, I just have Todd Marco. <laughs> <laughs> in capitals, I'm going to guess. Yeah, yeah, there it is. And all then, all you know, caps. Like, <laughs> like four margins. Like, <laughs> spacing them out. Uh, but there was something, you know, like we like to do in this show. We like to try to be critical. This time, I, I was wondering. It didn't make sense to me because they say, remember how uh, Audrey's like, I have to sleep with my brother, right? Yeah. So clearly... The the one set of parents took Audrey's room because um, they're 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 just in that bed. You can tell they're in Audrey's room. It's a girl's room. But then the other set of grandparents are sleeping in a set of bunk beds, bunk which beds. we're assuming is Rusty's room. Yeah, you have to assume. What room are Audrey and Rusty sleeping in? I don't know. So the, why did the guest bedroom? Yeah. So why didn't the the one exactly. set of grandparents just stay there and then like R- Russ and Audrey could sleep in the bunk beds? Yeah, what the fuck? I don't know. Yeah, because that's weird. Like at that at that age, sleeping in the same that's room with your sister, that's weird. Something. Same room, let alone same bed. Same bed. Yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah, you like the the boy like kind of like wants to cuddle and stuff, but he's like just you know sleeping. But like that's still like fucking no. weird. That's you know? that's some awkward stuff. Like I, I've seen I've seen awkward videos that start off with weird titles. Yeah, similar. I've you don't want that awkward horror movies to start off like that. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you don't want that. No. Next thing you know, she's getting caught in a laundry machine. <laughs> yeah, it's not it's not good, guys. She's grabbing something under the bed. This is really bad. Yeah, <sighs> this is going to a bad place, a this dark is... place, a dark place. Mike brought it up. Yeah, I I, Mike. No, I didn't. Why'd you bring this up, Mike? <laughs> I just want to know why the, why the grandparents didn't sleep in the. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I wanted to know about who was sleeping with who too, Mike. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> God, grow up, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I did like the subtle kind of thing where like, whoever's staying in the girls' room is like wa- reading the magazine or whatever. Yep. Oh, yeah. And then in the bunk bed, there's a girl. He's just <laughs> happy as can be. <laughs> not sleeping at all, wide-eyed, <laughs> looking yeah. at the poster of the girl up <laughs> on the ceiling. Did you notice like the other poster, too? There's the turtles. No. It looks like there's a huge tortoise fucking a small little turtle. <laughs> oh, at least it was on what? top of it. What? Just go in, back in the boys' bed in Russ's bedroom. Yeah, I'm gonna have to rewind okay. on this. I was, I was watched it twice. I'm like, are they fucking? Because I, I can hear that poster. You're gonna have to catch a glimpse of these warlocks. I yeah. don't know what the hell's going. It's on. great. <laughs> What's up, listeners? Sean here. Support for Confused Breakfast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming champions of the world. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Hair is very important to me, so I, I got to say, I try my best to look like Kurt Russell from The Thing as much as I can with his <laughs> top notch and his luscious beard. However, I do not want my downstairs area looking as rugged as my upstairs area. That's, that makes sense. That's why I choose Manscaped to keep my below-the-belt beard trimmed to look as beautiful as Henry Cavill's chin. To keep, <laughs> to keep it this way, I'm proud to say I'm one of the first people who have gotten my mitts on the new lawnmower 4.0 and i'm blown away by its craftsmanship and performance manscaped engineered the ultimate groin and body trimmer by focusing on intelligent functionally and incredibly comfortable grooming experience their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology now there is no more big trouble for little sean While you're at it, check out the other products like the Weed Whacker, Manscaped's 2-in-1 Nose and Ear Trimmer, or the Crop Preserver to prevent chafing, Crop Cleanser, a Moisturizing Nut Wash, or the Crop Reviver, a nice cooling ball spray to keep your boys feeling cool. Like Kurt Russell in the thing. (laughs) Get 20% off free shipping with the code CONFUSED at manscaped.com. That is 20% off free shipping with the code CONFUSED at manscaped.com. Wait, did you say confused? Confused. Conf- Unlock your confidence and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. Your balls will thank you. I like that. I like that. <laughs> it's big, so, big trouble for little Sean. Big trouble, little Sean. Does that mean you, you're you Kurt Russell, but then your thing is the thing? The, the ad's <laughs> over. Okay. Yeah, actually, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is not in the ad anymore. Goodbye.
So the next day at work, Clark discusses with his associate about his plans to use the Christmas bonus check for a swimming pool. That evening, he attempts to light the exterior Christmas lights, but they don't work. Clark goes to hide some Christmas presents he bought, but he's locked in the attic while the family goes shopping. That night, Clark is desperate to get the lights working and finally succeeds. As the family stares in awe, Clark is stunned by the sudden and completely unannounced arrival of Cousin Eddie and family. Hell yeah. I, I, I want to do an appreciation for uh, Ellen's dad. Okay. Uh, he's he's clearly the, the dickish one. He doesn't like Clark. Oh, Maybe for good reason, right? But he's got a couple funny moments in this movie one of the lines <laughs> being i'm freezing my baguettes off <laughs> I'm a big fan of that i'm going to start using that in real life but i also like when when clark's getting ready to light the lights and he's like drum roll everybody's like huh a drum roll please drum roll come on everybody's doing the drum roll he's going he's going he's not he's just making noises just, with his <laughs> mouth a very subtle thing but i do laugh when he does he's that. doing bullshit i do like uh, too when the, the lights don't light or whatever he gets he just kind of fucking flips out and is punching like the reindeer and santa claus and everything like that apparently he got so into it, like he broke his finger punching like one of the reindeer oh, or something shit. like that. And so, like they kept the take, so you can watch it. You and uh, so he re- resorts to kicking them instead after he punches like oh. the Santa or whatever. And so like, oh he just straight God. up broke his finger. He like karate chops the antlers off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> We've all been there at some point in our life where you're just like, I'm gonna break something. I need. I have. Don't to even. Hit, I have to hit something. I have to hit something. Dude, I have a note here. I'm just like, when do you give up? Like, like I know, like he's. I mean, you got to give it to him. I guess it's just yep. like he loves his family. He wants this to be perfect and everything. But like, at what at what point where you're just like, I like sometimes I'm getting home and like the the porch light's not on and I, it's dark. I'm trying to like fish for my keys and I drop my keys. It's the end of the world. <laughs> it's a fucking end. So like and like and then you do the thing where you like bend over and you like you miss him because you're like so full or something. Like, you miss him first. Like <laughs> you're like, you just <laughs> got done at dinner or something. Yeah. And <laughs> You try and pick him up again, you miss him once. Like if this is the third time, you're f- I'm fucking done, man. You're just I'm gonna lay down. I'm and go gonna to sleep. kill myself. You just, you just sit down on the stoop. You're just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> where, where did it all go? I actually wrong? want to reenact. Can we where start doing reenactments wrong? of things that we say, like stories? I want that in yeah. video reenactment form. I want to see that. <laughs> God, God damn it. <laughs> You, you turn shit. it. You turn into Mel Gibson and Lethal Weapon with the gun. Just like, <laughs> <laughs> Tears in your eyes. Just can't. can't. What happened? I dropped my keys. <laughs> what? I can't do it. <laughs> this is off the rails, man. I love it. Has anyone ever been up in an attic like that before? Uh uh-uh. uh Oh man. No. They don't work that way. I was gonna say you, you we're can, not that strong. It's huh? just. It's just like the the spring goes back up. Yeah. So like. You just have to put some weight on it. You can't lock that. Right. I was gonna say that that doesn't make any. It sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah, that's that's a very frustrating sequence. It is, but uh, it makes for a nice moment. It, in fact, I think, like you were saying in the intro, that is what spawned the story. Was apparently the director or the writer got st- stuck in an attic or a basement and watched a bunch of old movies oh, like Chevy okay. Chase yeah, 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 did yeah. in this movie, gotcha. which is cool. I mean, like you get that one of the most underrated Christmas songs of all time, mm. Ray Charles, the, mm. that spirit of Christmas. Yeah. That song, that song is so perfect for me. It's always on a Christmas playlist. That's what he's listening to when he's looking at the old footage and he's oh, crying yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. And I don't know if you noticed it, but it's so perfect. There's a Ray Charles does a laugh in that song and it happens right when, when they pull down the attic and Clark falls, <laughs> which by oh, the way, why really? did he set up? Why did he set why himself? Why is he sitting up? right on that door? <laughs> yeah. that, that like of all the places in this <laughs> damn like attic, you, you're telling me that's where you decided to post up, bro? Just in case somebody comes home and opens <laughs> the thing, <laughs> hey, I'll the, know. The fuck are you talking I don't know about? if it's like like a power of editing or something like that, or like it was just he did they just straight up dropped him like real hard. But it was it's such a fast fall. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah. Like, it, you, it's like it's no there's like no react you don't get time for him to like be like, Oh you know. It's oh. it's just it's just him crying and he's just gone. <laughs> After that, right just, when Ray Charles laughs. <laughs> it's so good. Uh and I also wondered like critically, why wouldn't he he falls through the ceiling onto the bunk bed. Oh he's yeah. created a hole already. Yeah. Why doesn't he just I just slip through. Just make that hole bigger. Just slip through. Call man. it good. Yeah, just go. You've already ruined this. Just you've you've already set yourself up. Just do it. It's I did, okay. I did like the subtleness of he's like 
hiding a present or whatever, and he finds the Mother's Day present. Yep. <laughs> it's like, was it like 1983 yeah, or something like, like that? Yeah, so seven, six years earlier. So I think it was like the date uh, that Vacation came out. Cool. So it was oh, like there. around that time. <laughs> Nice little. <laughs> there are there are some nice callbacks throughout this. Yeah, movie. you can see Call the station wagon eggs. covered up in the, in the garage, I think, yeah. somewhere. And yeah, there's some pretty cool things. Nice. In oh man. Uh, so then he has, he finally gets the lights lit up, right? <laughs> finally. Uh, and I was thinking about this critically. Um, we're assuming you know this movie takes place in Chicago, right? Yeah. Which is a giant city. Like yeah. what? One of the top five most populated cities in the U.S. Probably. Um, so for that brief time when these lights turn on he we're assuming he's taken the electrical equivalent of every household in chicago yeah how is he going to maintain this electrical bill <laughs> i'm just gonna say his <laughs> how is this gonna bill happen must be outrageous he's are he's in debt we like, know this there's no way that this is a manageable no wonder he's looking for this bonus he is hunting for this bonus. That Jelly of the Month Club bullshit is not going to to feed this electricity well, bill. I will say he's pretty irresponsible like me when he yeah you know, when you're just waiting for a paycheck. He's like, well, I'll be good because at the end of the month I get Patreon, so I, that'll that'll take care of this. <laughs> you know, just, just like, oh God, please. <laughs> but uh, no, I I don't know. Like, it's doesn't doesn't it cut to like one of the, like the city yeah, managers? He he hits auxiliary nuclear power <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and just hits it, and then like all the rest of the city's lights gone. So this is this is. Going to run like this for the season. So yeah, auxiliary nuclear power for like how long? <laughs> I don't know about you guys. Radioactive at and the moment. C- as, uh, here in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, in this area, uh, like electric bills are obnoxious. Yeah. Like they fluctuate yes. in an in insane amount. So uh, I can't imagine what this is going to do to his neighbors. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I have no idea. But no it's idea. clearly enhancing the holiday season for all of the family members. Everybody's happy about it. It does look great. It looks great. I yeah. gotta say, yeah. It's but like the scene before this when they're when it's like Beverly D'Angelo and him like fishing for the like the light. And I know I get that's funny. Like the light switch has to be on yeah. for the, for this outlet to work. That's randomly over here. You know that's funny. But like it all got lost to me. Like this is one of the scenes where it, like. It just took too long for yeah, me. Yeah, it you did. Know? It does it take did. a long time. I'm like I get it. Like I get like I. Just let's move along. It just kept going. I'm glad you guys kind of agree because I was just like, God damn, like kind move of, along. Kind of to the point that you wonder if like if she's messing with him, like she has That's, that, yeah she has that smirk on her face by the end of she it. She realizes, she's yeah, like she, I'm smart. Like than something him. something's happening in her brain that she's like, oh, she's like put something together somehow. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, is she messing with him or sh- did she just figure it out? Yeah. She just figured it out. Okay. I, and I, that's all I need to hear, basically. And, and she knows her husband Clark well enough to be like, "Well, I know I'm smarter than him, but I'm yeah. just not going to tell him." Okay, we're going to pretend like he figured this out because I thought that they she's were. She's there to give credit where credits yes. due. He worked really hard. I'm not going like, to. Good job. Yeah, I thought that they were doing the thing like so, like he goes inside, messes with it, and she's out there. Then they both go outside yep, and the like s- not knowing that they've gone out. Like I was like, "Oh, I I know this bit. This is kind of a funny <laughs> bit." Like like where'd you go? Like you know. But then it just got like I didn't know if they were going to like capitalize on it or nope. not and then then it's just cousin eddie shows up <laughs> and d- from the minute that cousin eddie shows up he is he is rick moranis in ghostbusters <laughs> he's a fucking tornado from the show minute this man stealing. arrives show steel completely yeah absolutely he's so fucking good like everything from here on out especially these opening scenes with cousin eddie right like even the weirdness of the, the rubber sheets and the gerbils and the face he makes there Jesus when he's talking about that Christ. and the, how he tries to kiss Ellen and Ellen's like, <laughs> <laughs> that's I, a I, that's a reoccurring joke every yeah, every yeah. time in almost every single movie when they run into cousin Eddie he tries to give her a kiss and she is always just like yes. squirming away it's so funny because it's it's Ellen's cousin is the wife is the I wife okay yeah. just yeah so so Eddie's just the rando yeah. in, that showed up right. mar- and married into the family yeah yeah. Um, Fortunate bastard. Yeah. But but then then they get inside and we're talking like the fucking dicky that he's wearing that it's, you can see through. It's so fucking <laughs> the, the giant bulge in his pocket when he walks over and just hits the windmill and it, it shatters <laughs> and he just, just walks fine. away. From it. It. Damn it, dude! And, and the, the the thing like how close he gets to Clark's face <laughs> when he's like just uh huh yeah yep, right there mm-hmm. talking about talking about the kids like daughters in the clinic. Uh, son's gonna be barking for the yak woman or something. Working you know, on like, his career. <laughs> oh, he's going to college. Carnival. Carnival. <laughs> the, it, it, it never lets up. And I also read that apparently uh, there's two interesting facts from the scene. One, 
the shoes that Cousin Eddie's wearing with that gorgeous outfit, those white fucking shoes, yeah. are apparently the same ones he gave Clark as a gift right. in the original vacation. <laughs> so oh I'd God. like to assume that then Clark then re-gifted them back to Cousin Eddie, <laughs> is what I'd like to assume. And so, he, probably, he probably didn't know. He probably didn't know. And he, he didn't know. He just probably thought, nope. wow, Clark, these are great. Wow, Clark, thanks. <laughs> and then also, so they're drinking the eggnog out of the Wally, their Wally World glasses. Right. Which is just like uh, uh, the destination they went to in early vacation, which tells me that they at least walked away with some souvenirs. Yeah. From, from he bought those b- when the cops let him go in r- original vacation. John Candy I, got them for him. John Candy yeah, had totally. those up. Yeah. I have one of those. I'm I gonna, do too. I'm, I'm going to drink out of it. Why didn't we bring it? I'm going to drink out of it the next episode. All right, next episode. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Doesn't count, man. Man, God damn it. Damn it. It's our first fucking YouTube. Yeah, it's gonna be YouTube's. <laughs> oh, but yeah, you guys, you guys are right that like he does elevate this movie. Like it, he puts puts on a fucking treadmill and turns it all the way up, almost to the fact where we didn't even need any of the other movie. <laughs> so so <laughs> yeah. you're saying it should we can be, move on? It should have been started right now. <laughs> like where I started it every year that I've ever watched it, I I don't really need. I didn't even need to see any of the. So other you things. pulled an AJ TBS style. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> you Sean only caught AJ. it when it's fucking at we'll, we'll 45 get, minutes in. We'll get to my rating. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so scene four, the Griswolds decide to have some weekend fun and go sledding. While Clark and Eddie go shopping, Eddie reveals to Clark that he's flat broke, which also Clark is, by the way. And then Clark offers yeah. to get Eddie some Christmas presents. Clark, worried that he still hasn't received his Christmas bonus check, can't sleep, and has a conversation with Eddie's daughter, Ruby Sue. On Christmas Eve, Clark's senile Aunt Bethany and grumpy Uncle Lewis arrive as well. They have a disastrous evening, including Bethany's cat getting electrocuted and Uncle Lewis accidentally burning down the Christmas tree while lighting his cigar. Uh. I think in almost every Christmas movie, there's a sledding scene. Always. I mean, like there's an out of control sledding scene where, like, go like it's it's like the the great outdoor scene where he's a water skiing and it goes on too long. It goes it? on way too long. But this <laughs> this one I I kind of like. It doesn't really go, drag on to me that much. But I've just noticed that in every almost every Christmas movie, there's like that shot, that POV shot facing them, and they're like, oh, <laughs> and it's like every time I see them, like that's yeah, it's Christmas. Yeah, I don't know about you guys. But. Can I ask you? Did you like the way that this sledding scene? happened yes okay i mean like when it when he takes off like immediately yeah. i fucking like holy shit <laughs> it's just like burning just, everything as well just so, so lighting does, it fucking up does yeah. that surprise yeah. you that he says this yeah yeah me too so that's why i got <laughs> that's why i had to just confirm <laughs> that you're 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 in you're in line with this you're on so, board with all this <clears throat> there's like there's some jokes in this movie like they start off fucking great yeah and then they just kind of peter out for me okay you know like i got gotcha. you like some some sort of like there's some sound effects that like amplify th- like we'll get to later with like the turkey and everything like that. The sound effects amplify the scene so much, and then, <laughs> and then it's just like I don't know. It just dies off for me. It's like they had the the inkling of a joke, and they added the one detail in there that was like, oh, that's gonna elevate it so much, and then they just kind of didn't have any other ideas. Okay, to me, gotcha. I don't I know. Got you. Sorry, no, it's a, you don't have to be mad, dude. I'm not mad. You seem mad. No, I'm not mad. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Jeremy. Mad. I'm not mad. <laughs> as long as you're not mad. Okay. Fuck you guys. I, I, I have to say, I, I'm also just a big fan of the sleep, the scene, but also <laughs> I just love how it fucking takes just off. <laughs> what he says later, dudes. <laughs> later, yeah. later, dude. And honestly, the 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 part of this that makes it for me right is right before he takes off, he just kind of. Pops his hood up just slightly. <laughs> you know, we might be going kind of fast here. He's like, and he's just like, that hood never comes down the entire time. <laughs> then he's Thank going God he down the hill. Up. Thank God he put that hood up, right? <laughs> and then Cousin Eddie, though, finding it later on, and it's just burnt through. <laughs> that was the <laughs> yeah, other. That's, which, that's by great. the way, that's my favorite Christmas song of all time. I've not been able to find it. I'm going to look for it again this year. Is the tubas playing Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer? Okay. <laughs> while, oh. Eddie, while Eddie's standing there in his fucking robe, yeah, <laughs> emptying Unloading. the shitter, yeah, yeah, just like looking like he's taking a. <laughs> <laughs> I that, just that's the best Christmas mouth, song like, I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> the, and like even the small details in this movie are funnier than like the actual jokes because I love this the the shit piling up <laughs> you know, from outside of his house. It's just like there's so much of it. It's just like how what's going on. In <laughs> It's like, right. well, my family came over. That's what's going yeah. on, you know? It's the broken Santa Claus. It's the broken <laughs> yeah. reindeer sled. It's now it's the it's the sled that he yeah. used to go sledding. It keeps piling up. My my prop, by the way, the sled. Oh, the damn. S- oh, the sled? Yeah. Oh, right. that's want, a good uh, one. 
I want Todd's stereo because I bet it's awesome. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Pre broken. <laughs> oh gosh, that's a tough one. I know. I want. I think I want cousin Eddie's hat. Uh, I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I want cousin Eddie's nice. hat. Nice, yeah. damn dude. Sounds good, good, good to me. I like that. Uh, what would you think about Uncle Lewis and Aunt Bethany? My favorite part of this entire movie. They're fan. Aunt really? Bethany, so funny. <laughs> Aunt Bethany, for my money, has has the most worth in the words she says in this movie. Yeah. Like even when she's walking up and she it's your house on fire, Clark. <laughs> yeah. Don't throw me down, Clark. <laughs> like she's so she's clearly like like they said, this might be her last Christmas. She doesn't really For know what's both going on. <laughs> yeah. Well, and William Hickey, by the way. Yeah, William Hickey. I'm sorry, I didn't mean no, to interrupt good, anybody, man. but William Hickey from uh, Pete and Pete, yep. Grandpa from Pete and Pete, he's another a, nice reoccurrence here. He's the principal from Major Pain as well. Oh. That's where I notice him most. I don't know why. Spunky. <laughs> yeah. Here's an interesting fact about those two, though. Uh, so during this movie, May mm-hmm. May Questel was. Uh, she was 81, but William Hickey was only 62. Oh, wow. Like, he Crazy. looks Quite the difference. bad for yeah. 62, and she looks great for he 81. Had, yeah. With that voice, he had to have been smoking cigars oh, God. daily. I oh, don't know. Yeah. Like, it just might have aged him or something. Constant. But, and you know, she was the original voice of Betty Boop. Right. Oh. Yeah. Wait, she was? Yeah. No shit. Yeah, man. Well, there uh, you I go. The, the final I love riding in cars. <laughs> 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 the final time that she pr- portrayed Betty Boop was um, uh, oh, Who Framed sh- Roger Rabbit. Yeah, dude. Which we're going to have to do oh, one yeah. of these Ooh, days. Yeah. But uh, okay. I think this is also her final movie. It might have been. Yeah. I think it was. That's what I heard. It was yeah. her last movie before she passed away. I know so you, good. I know you guys read up on, we try to read up on some facts that maybe you don't know. So yeah. it's it's widely reported that when they walk in the door, a real life earthquake occurred in California. That's right. That that was left in the movie. I went back so, and just tried to look at corners. Apparently, and see you can it. see it shake. Apparently, like very trained eye people can see the camera shake a little bit when they come in the door. Really, from a real life earthquake. Jeez, okay. But I I couldn't find. I tried so hard. I wanted to put that up on the old TikTok. Yeah, yeah. Be like, look, <laughs> look. Oh, you, you could just, totally you see. Could t- it. I might do it anyway. You're gonna yeah. do it and like <laughs> over exaggerate it, just like edit it. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <They're> fucking done. <laughs> that Carl Zeiss go. Oh, damn, that's so weird. <laughs> Oh, but, there, but yeah. it's kind of it's kind of fitting that there's like an earthquake with like more family showing up. She's yeah. like, well, the earth might as well quake with <laughs> all this bullshit. Happening. The world might as well fucking end <laughs> at this point. Let's be honest. You got more people showing up. Unreal. One one of the things that uh, I always laugh at with a couple of my cousins and my brother, and we always like do this quote when we're at family stuff. That now, like, you start to be like, huh? Well, nowadays, probably couldn't make that. Is when cousin Eddie's there and. They're like shit, you know. Get get out of the room, and he and he goes to rest. He goes, "Come on, let's go find your sister." Hoo, hoo, hoo. And he like does the fake punches. And yes. <laughs> we always say that, but then we're like, "That's kind of weird." <laughs> like, oh, let's go find your sister. Yikes! <laughs> Yikes! Yikes! What are you guys gonna do? It sounds strange. <laughs> Just annoy her. I hope. Well, yeah, but they're again, so you're like, yeah, cool. Let's go find your sister. It'll be that's, funny. That's just again the brilliance of Randy Quaid, man. Yeah. That guy, he that guy the plays it to the T, and the, like the punches and. Uh, by the way, we totally skipped a line that I, I just I think I repeat every now and again, and I, I have a, another buddy who does too. It's just like, you know, they got a, it's all good over here, but if I get done it over here, my hair just ain't gonna look right. <laughs> it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the plate in his head, then he gets well, dented. <laughs> that, but that's the best part about Cousin Eddie is you literally, like, you can't make fun of him. He He's yeah. either completely oblivious to it or he right. doesn't care because Clark even says, do you really think it's going to matter? And he's like, well, yeah, it is because, see, I this ain't going to look yeah. right. If that, <laughs> Yeah, no, this part ain't going to look right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, but that's why I love I love cousin Eddie more and more as the years go on because he's clear he's a vet like we're establishing he's a veteran yeah like we we know he 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 had his work done at the VA he's got a metal plate in his head uh, he stands up for the national anthem like yep. he may have some issues related to right. his time of service yeah <laughs> and yet like people are like making fun of him kind of you know yep. like he was obviously a pilot and uh, then he went into crop <laughs> dusting later on and exactly. became a pilot and saved the entire universe exactly in independence day so who's you know, crazy now yeah who's yeah. crazy now so there you go i love the even. whole dinner scene so much like the i mean you're right like him standing it's not the like uh national anthem it's a pledge of allegiance <laughs> <laughs> which is so fucking good so why don't you recite the? We want you to to to, to put the prayer on. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I pledge allegiance. <laughs> but even that, do you like? Do you feel like that joke was extended too far? Even like the like, 
like grace they wouldn't even say grace grace yeah she died 30 years ago i don't know <laughs> i don't know what it is with them and man. he goes the blasting and she goes what, what is <laughs> that says no what is that motion he makes to her the blasting <laughs> is that like look at my mouth read <laughs> my lips <laughs> Like it's, it's so, so <laughs> it's so over the top. Like <laughs> I like how she even says, "I'm not doing that." <laughs> <laughs> but dude, you you mentioned it earlier. Like we talked about the burbs, the foley and the burbs yeah. during the sardine scene. This is another <laughs> example of where the foley artists like are so perfect. It's so good. As soon as he cuts open that tear gauge, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> and all the forks and knives hitting the plate and, <laughs> yes. the, and the chewing oh, of yeah, the yeah. hard turkey. They're dipping it in the wine and the yeah. water and stuff to try and <laughs> They all seem to have their little quirks on how they're getting by. Like I just noticed this year, Ellen like tosses it over yeah, shoulder. Yeah, shoulder. Yeah. I never saw that before. Yeah. She pretend takes a bite and like tosses it over shoulder and goes, mm, oh, that's really good. Oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> and even the dog just like on under, under the table, just you know, uh, whatever he's doing, what he's like getting ready, or he's like, like and it's like shaking the table a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, it's so fucking great. <laughs> I, I just, man, I love, I love good foley scenes, man. Now mm-hmm. that we've been doing this, and that, and that is fan. Even the sound of the like when the tree explodes, it goes <laughs> that fireball because that was a real fireball, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh it, yeah. It was. A, it was definitely like a very hardcore, just prop. Like looks like some sort of dragon fire at a carnival. Yeah. Spitting out. You know what I mean. Like from the doorway, and you're just like, okay, but come on, but I love it. What's you great know, about I love it is it's it. got no, it doesn't have like any music in the scene whatsoever. Yep. And like, it, I, I also have to mention like, Clark is like, is still ha- has hope for all of this. Is like, got all the family here, you know. Like he's he's still like like it's normal. Like it's this is the moment he's been waiting for. Yeah, exactly. And looking then, around his full table at Christmas, you yeah. know, the holiday. He's he's like, we did it. It's, it's like just, it's like triumphant. It's just a side shot of him just like looking at everybody and then <laughs> 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 just looks over. Uh, <laughs> like did it die? Did, did like, anybody else? Uh, did me? <laughs> do you <laughs> Things are good. Things are bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> things are good. Things are bad. And you know he's been planning. Like Clark's been planning this out for so long. You even see him like fake holding up a Santa Claus beard. Like you know on Christmas morning he's gonna yeah, come out. He's trying he, to. And he plan. He planned this joke all along where he's like, yeah. the kids are all gonna be here, and I'm gonna say, hey kids, I heard on the news they spotted Santa's sleigh, and everybody's like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you serious, serious Clark? <laughs> <laughs> That that, that to me, that's the shit I love about this movie. Because Cousin A just ruins it. Doesn't just, know any better. He just ruins it. It's just like this. It's like, would you just try to play along, Cousin Eddie? <laughs> just try. Oh. Yeah. You know, I have My to mention. Tree. I have to mention. Um, I know we, we kind of, we're, we're with like, uh, he has the conversation with, with Ruby Sue. Yep. And then they're going through the through the grocery store and he's just piling just loads of dog <laughs> they're food. different kinds of dog and food. just different kinds of dog food soft food and then like three bags of walmart old roy and you're just <laughs> and you're just like like what but what it, how is he gonna pay for this he that, knows clark's gonna he it. just knows clark's gonna yeah. do it huh? he's like well this is a necessity so yep. <laughs> this is just what's gonna happen and then, he, then he's just like at the at the end of all of this, it's like we no. It, well, you're just gonna have to you're just gonna have to tell us, or else we're gonna find out. And he's, ah. Well, this is something. This is a real <laughs> surprise. Anyway, he, a full <laughs> list of what do we want? And then he says, "I'd like to get something for you, Clark. Something real, really nice." <laughs> you see that giant bulge in his pants too? That is my favorite part about that scene. <laughs> I love that bulge. Oh, I, I thought I for say sure. That on okay. I think he oh, can. Yeah, whatever. Okay, cool, yeah. Yeah. I thought for sure that they were gonna like have a joke in there. It's like you got a lot of dog food here, and like he he's like putting Alpo in there too. He's like, well, the Alpo's for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Alpo's for the family and the trailer, you know, yeah. or something like that. The canned stuff is like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that. Is, that is, yeah, that is a that's an important scene. I mean, it shows that Clark's trying to do good, and that, yeah, it is that he does care for. At least cousin Eddie and and the kids. He wants. He definitely wants the kids to have a good Christmas. It is still coming back to family for yes, Clark. Right. You know, all in all, it's still coming back to family. For but ultimately, Clark. it's side boob. He wants some side boob oh, in right. real life, Absolutely. not just the dream. He wants right. that side boob. Yep, that's 100%. what this pool is all about. <laughs> that is funny. That I think that's what life is all about. I think you're right. Side boob. <laughs> when <laughs> Eddie's when Eddie's bouncing on the diving board, <laughs> <laughs> one, one, <laughs> rolling his shirt around. In the air. He's got the wife beater tucked, tucked into the banana hammock <laughs> that you're. Just like I think he's got snorkel gear on his head <laughs> yeah. too. And the, 
I don't know why this is the funniest thing to me. This is this is what takes the cake in this scene. Is he's whipping a towel around and then whips it into the pool. <laughs> God just damn it. Beer in his hand. Yeah. He just whips a towel into the pool. It's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> That's the funniest thing to me out of that whole thing. <laughs> not the banana hammock, not the wife beater, nope. not the random family, and not the side boob. That. It's just <laughs> like there's an unavailable towel now. <laughs> exactly. God damn it. Dude. That's just inconvenient. <laughs> it's like, this a, that's a, is that's a hot commodity when you have a pool. Yeah. All right, so let's finish this. The final scene of this movie, Clark finally receives an envelope from a company messenger. Instead of the presumed bonus, the envelope contains a free year's membership for the Jelly of the Month Club. This prompts Clark to go on a tirade about his boss, Frank. Clark cuts down a new tree that has a squirrel in it. Eddie drives to Frank's mansion and kidnaps him. The SWAT team arrives, but Frank decides not to press charges and explains the situation to his wife and reinstates Clark bonus. The entire family celebrates with flank, with flank, his wife, and the entire SWAT team, while Clark realizes that he was able to put on a great Christmas that everyone will remember. Wow. Can you believe that? I don't. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> again, again, to speak to Cousin Eddie's just like <clears throat> childlike nature and doesn't really understand what... If you watch yeah. the scene where he, where Clark opens the envelope and actually reads what it is, and he says it's a one-year... Membership to the Jelly of the Month Club, and everybody's like, "Oh my god!" But cousin Eddie in the background goes, "He like gets oh. an instant smile on his face, like that's this is it's awesome." Like, wow, dude, <laughs> that's the gift that keeps on giving. Clark, that's Clark. the gift that keeps on giving all year. He means that. <laughs> he is, he, he legit. Does. But it's a difference in in hopefulness, right? Like Clark wants all this money to put in a pool, where like cousin Eddie is broke, lives in an RV, and like would love. The, the mo- jelly of the month club. Oh, he man, thinks that would be amazing. It would be yeah. amazing. You know how fast I run out of jelly? <laughs> He's on everything, you know? It's great. <laughs> you mean to tell me that Cousin Eddie has such a problem with running out of jelly that the jelly of the month club is a godsend. <laughs> would fix his problem. Well, I don't think he's had jelly for years, and so this is like a commodity. <laughs> this is big time living right now. <laughs> this is big time living. You've got... Oh, that's great. I love that. Yeah. I, lo- spin, <laughs> I love that. He spins into that. that fucking tirade that he just loses it. It's, it's maybe... Like the most iconic thing from this movie, I mean, cousin Eddie is, but like the most iconic like uh, lines from this movie, tirade. I would say we've all been there. Oh like, yeah, you know, dropping your keys. I mean, we've all been there. Hundred percent. I lose it. You know, I just give up and and snap. But like half the things he said in there, you just like can't say anymore. You're like, canceled. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, a lot of a lot of the things in his little tirade that he went off, of, like everyone was like, "Oh, this is definitely like it was, it was like this ad lib genius comedy that happened." Well, a lot of people, like the the other cast members, were actually wearing like uh, signs with with, with, with adjectives with words oh, on wow. them, to so he would have cues to go off of. In this long tirade that he had, and that's how they got it done. That's funny. One of those was four flushing, which, yep, if you remember, yep. is jo- a John Hughes like yes, classic <laughs> from Uncle Buck and some other ones. And Home Alone. And Home Alone. Four flushing uh, cock flushin'. is out my door. Uh, yep. So it's it's a reoccurring thing in John Hughes flicks. That that's four fun. flushing. So. That's really fun. I do love when he when he dips that mug in there and drinks it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's, good. it's, good. it's really good. <laughs> <laughs> you're lo- you're nutty. <laughs> uh, does it, no, does no one ever question Eddie just leaving the house though? Does just nobody yeah, pay no. attention he to Eddie? Just, he just straight up bails and no one ever sees and it. And no one says a word about it. I That's love a good it. Point. <laughs> I always, as a kid, thought he was just leaving because he was yeah. mad about the tirade. Yeah, they never really address that. Like, no, that's he, where he, what he's going to he do. Just, he just left. He just leaves. Yeah, leaves his family. <laughs> yep. He coasted in on fumes. He doesn't have any gas to get over there. Yeah. Yep. But he still does. Still goes over to his cozy house on Melody yeah. Lane with all the other rich people. Clean, clean getaway. Clean comeback. On I there. love the squirrel jumping <laughs> out of the tree. So much like his mom faints or whatever, and like after everything is kind of done for and everything like that, <laughs> like the shot cuts to like her laying on the ground. He's like, "Stay there, mom." She just passed out on the fucking floor still. Well, but Aunt, Aunt Bethany's knitting, <laughs> and Uncle <laughs> Lewis is sleeping. Out. <laughs> My big thing is like, is like you think about that as like uh, as viewing it, and you probably you're probably like. Uh, it's a squirrel. It's not that big of a deal. But in actuality, if a squirrel jumped out of your Christmas tree, you'd be freaking out too. Oh yeah, you, you know, know what I mean. Hard that'd be to catch. Yeah, probably. exactly. Like, oh fuck, there's a squirrel in the 
freaking house? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. That would be that would be like terrifying to a lot of people that you're just like it's like where the where is Eddie? He usually eats these things. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> not anymore. High in cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> I love throughout the movie too, like where like Chip or uh, Clark Griswold is just like reliant on his son, especially when he's like locked in the in the attic, or whatever. He's like yelling for Russ and yeah. not his wife at all. Yeah, like he's just reliant on him saving him at like every turn. Yeah, and like when they're all huddled behind the thing, like trying to look for the squirrel, or whatever. He's like Russ. Yeah, I'm right here, Dad. Right here, Dad. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh <sorry. laughs> they did say the director told Rolling Stone that they had trained a squirrel for months. Wow, to be in this scene. However, the squirrel died the day before the scene was set to shoot. Oh, so oh they just God. got an untrained squirrel to just throw into the house, and they it was basically just straight chaos. They oh which ended up God. working. They worked that squirrel to death. <laughs> they worked. Sad, it, right? That is, I actually somebody, don't like that. Somebody call PETA. Is there Wait, a, don't call Peter. Is there in mem- in memoriam of this squirrel I at the end of the credits while that a terrible song is yeah. playing? <laughs> Jeez. I mean, well, old, right. old, old Lang Syne, maybe? <laughs> no animals were harmed, except for that squirrel. <laughs> natural causes. Natural causes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was not harmed. It's natural causes. We didn't know they don't live that long. <laughs> right. It's like a John Waters thing. He's like, well, we did eat it, so yeah. it's, it fed the cast. Um, my my big question is, Mike, if you if you and, and Molly are uh, are Todd and Margot, so is this your ideal Christmas margaritas and no Christmas tree? <laughs> yeah, well, because we will do things like that, but then we'll we'll have the conversations of like, even though they are corny and cliche, like wouldn't it have been nice to have a Christmas tree? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, we'll do that <laughs> yeah. stuff. Yeah, but I dude, I mean, there's never a, not a wrong time for margaritas. I agree with that. That's um, true. You know, so you know, and like kissing every square inch of a body after a shower. Yeah, you, you're got to be into that Makes after sense. a good workout. Yeah, that's yeah, great. Works, so works I'm that. just. Every square inch, you know. Every, Every square, square inch. inch. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you know? Did you know? Did you recognize their house, Todd and Margo's house? Isn't it oh. Lethal Weapon? It's the Murtaugh's house. Yeah. That's the Murtaugh's house. Yeah. yeah. Are you kidding me? It is same house, man. Well, I, I it was I in did. Monster Squad too. You could see That's it down right. the street. Yeah. That's right. The, what is this famous block that people live I, on? I Google mapped it. It's yeah. just, it's just this on is, the it's just on like the the studio back lot pretty much. It's like yeah. f- just for movies. It's just much. for exteriors of movies. Well, the the like the the house. For the Griswolds is now in WandaVision. That's right. Okay. Yeah, I yeah. read that like from uh from what Disney Plus or whatever okay. WandaVision show. That's that. Well, this is like some famous block of houses that yeah. just live next yeah. door to each other. Are Pretty you kidding sweet. me? That's insane. Pretty That's cool. Dope. I'd buy it, dude. I'd be in. I want to make one mention about uh Clark's dad and how how sweet of a man he is mm-hmm. and how that scene where he comes to like be like, hey man, you just you just mucked it up, dude. You know, and he talks <laughs> about how how'd you keep it together, Dad? I had a lot of help from Jack Daniels. Jack Daniels, <laughs> and and he even says, "Are you gonna read the night the night before Christmas?" He says, it's your turn. It's your turn. And he walks away. He's such it's a your sweet house. man. Is... Do you know he was? Uh, I don't have his name in front of me. He was the original dad of Jerry Seinfeld in like the pilot episode. Oh wow, he was uh, Jerry Seinfeld's dad in that show for like one or two episodes. Just a great dad, sweet man. Nice. Yeah, oh, man. I like yeah, that. he is uh, John Randolph. That's yeah. right. Okay. And uh, I, I think he's my favorite character in this movie. I think so too. To be completely honest, he's like my favorite character every time he pops up because it's just like, as it's like every time he's just kind of this nice little breath of uh, of of confidence building yeah. for Clark, and he's trying to do something nice for his family, but his dad is there. He's like, oh, it's just brilliant. He's like, I learned everything about exterior, exterior illumination from you, Dad. It's a butte, Clark. It's, <laughs> it's a, a butte, it's a beaut, Clark. It's a butte. Well, did you even notice at the dinner table, um, yeah. Clark's parents were like super lovey-dovey and That's kissing right. on each other, where yeah. Ellen's parents are just... Like they never seemed affectionate towards <laughs> each other. They never stopped drinking, and they're never just like they're never like affectionate. <laughs> the little lights are not twinkling. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for noticing, Art. <laughs> even when he, uh, even when uh, Clark's like, he's like, I'm going to go in and do this, and his dad's like, I'm going in with him. It's just like he's always there, man. And when he, he gets it, when Clark's he gets dad. what he thinks is his bonus check, the the art is just like, well, oh, what is it? A ticket to the Looney Bin or something like that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but but to Art's credit, though. When Frank Shirley is in the house yeah. and they make that ultimatum to him, like Art stands up with a look in his face like, you yeah, better, you yeah, better do trash. right on this. You're trash. Yeah. So to his credit. You're right. There we go. You're yeah. right. I also heard that Ellen ad-libbed the hand on the penis. <laughs> how, <laughs> how, like, and that's maybe a testament to Chevy Chase's acting skills. Yeah. 
Beverly D'Angelo puts her hand on your junk. On your gear. While this film is going yeah. on and you keep it together. <laughs> yeah. And then and then removes it and then puts it back. Oh, oh wow. Well, even even like I've got a, there's there's a bulge happening happening bigger than than cousin Eddie's. <laughs> why Whoa! why yeah. would you want anybody else is is what I'm asking because like if if that's her natural move to when when yeah. a cop pulls a gun on her and says freeze, a SWAT team pulls their guns on and her and that's says her move. That's her move is yep. to go straight for well, the penis. No, so that Mary's wasn't right her woman. move. Like that, my pride and joy. She was already doing that because yeah. they said freeze. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> so she so it wasn't her move. She oh, was just already point. there. That's a good <laughs> point. Like that. That's even point. better, right? <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh man. And like what an ending, you know, everything comes around. The one thing the one thing as a as a look back, you know, like to 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 look at it with modern eye, if I were part of that SWAT team they got me out of my bed on Christmas Eve to go do this. I'm not sticking around and dancing and singing Christmas carols. No. I'm the yeah. fuck out of there. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going home. I'm going to tell you right now, there, I'm, I'm surprised there weren't some accidental shots fired because that would be an upsetting place to be on Christmas Eve. Yeah. How, how could you? Pull, like, oh, and you know what? It's whose fault is it? It's, um, it's the wife's fault. Yep. It's, it's Shirley's wife's yep. fault. That's, Frank Shirley's wife. Yeah, how could she? Bullshit, how could she man. call the police after her husband was abducted? It's what crazy. A bitch. I mean, it's like what? <laughs> what do people do? They like, call call the police on anything now. Yeah, no. It's just all those Karens yep. out there. Yeah, I know. Real Karen move to call the police after your husband was abducted. It's in crazy. the middle of the night. It's like, what can we do? What's going to happen? Horrible. Next? Well, you guys got anything else? <laughs> no. I do have one last thing. As that as that shot pulls away from Chevy Chase, right? The ending song starts. Yeah. And he's like, I did it. And it keeps pulling away. Then all of a sudden it reveals that Snots is just sitting right at his feet. <laughs> yeah. And he yeah. was like, get, get away. Yeah. <laughs> get away. <laughs> got a little bit of Mississippi Mississippi leg hound in him, you know. Miss- I mean? <laughs> if he starts up, <laughs> just let him finish. <laughs> Don't want to be wearing short pants. <laughs> Anyway, all right. Short fans. Anything, anything else, boys? Where we wrap this up? Nah. Oh, okay, so we've stripped away the nostalgia. We've Get looked at this here. with a modern eye. Yeah. Critical modern eye. AJ, what is your thoughts on this movie and your rating? I, I do really enjoy seeing this movie every year uh, as it comes around. Like I say, it has become a bit of a tradition for my wife and I to watch this while we decorate our tree, um, and. Uh, that being said, I, so it definitely holds like a more special place in my heart. Um, and getting to kind of like understand the jokes a little bit better um, and appreciate things like Cousin Eddie and, and everything. I would have to say this is probably bumped up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give this just a really solid 7.5. 7.5. Sean, how about you, buddy? Yeah, man. Uh, I felt a little in – I felt kind of – I got to say a little disappointed about this movie yeah. when I when I watched it. Um I don't know, maybe I expected the first one a little bit. I just like a lot of the a lot of the jokes meandered like I said and um like I love the, all the Christmas vibe and like some of the jokes are like un like bar, bar none classic. You can't get much better than them. But some of it just didn't land with me, but I got to say also that talking about it in this episode made me like it a little bit more. Um, just, just how you guys are so affectionate about it and everything like that. That was, I was going to be like a three. Um, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to say I'm a 4.6 on this. I think it's, I think it's fine. I, I really, I, I like it and I'll watch it during Christmas, but, uh, I won't go choose it over Santa Claus say maybe. Oh. Yeah. When you're looking at it from a critical eye, I still feel the same way I felt about it in the traditional aspect of it, of what it brings to my family. But like as a critical movie, it is great. But there's one thing that really stuck out to me this time around. It's how bad of a person Clark Griswold is. Like he truly is not a good person. He's straight, yeah. he's straight selfish. He can't control his temper in the car. He's endangering the lives of his family. He lets his daughter freeze out there when they're getting the tree. <laughs> he's super mean to Todd and Margot. He doesn't throw away his straw in the garbage at work when he stirs his coffee. He just puts the <laughs> he just throws the straw on the table. Yeah. Everyone has to wait for him to sled down the hill. He's got yeah. kids with him. Family's clearly in financial jeopardy for the stupid pool and light show that he's oh, putting man, on. Yeah. He wrote a bad check. He admitted to writing a bad check. He's like, I didn't have enough money in my account for the check to clear. So that's the one thing that brings it down to me. If you're trying to be critical about this, I yeah. just don't think that Clark's a great of a guy as we think he is. So I'm going to come down to a, from a 9 to a 7 on this one. And that takes us to an overall group score of 6.36, which puts us 
This movie is uh, just below Home Alone and just above Harry and the Hendersons. Hmm. Above Home Alone? It's below Home Alone. Okay, good. Home Alone is, above is higher. Harry. But above Harry and the I, Hendersons. I feel also, good about that? Like the I, whole, feel, I feel okay with that. I feel good about that. The whole like uh, Christopher Columbus aspect of this where he was supposed to direct it, like me not liking this movie, uh, not as much as Home Alone made Home Alone a little bit, a little bit better to me. Yeah. Like, and that story of like Chris Columbus didn't direct this movie, but he, go he got the banger of the two, in my opinion. That's I, I just like that about the, it. The last thing I will say nice about this movie is that it's funny. It's a Christmas movie, but it never actually depicts Christmas Day. It leads all that's the way right. up yeah, yeah. to Christmas Eve. But for me, that's cool because. I've noticed the older I get, the best part about the holiday season oh, yeah. is the journey up to is it. Is getting to it. it. Christmas Eve is the peak of Christmas. Christmas yep. Day is like, eh, you know, like because it's over. Yeah, sure. So, so that is the one cool thing I like about this movie is it, it really picks the good parts of the holiday season. It's the build up to it. That's a good point. It's really what it is. It's a great it's, point. It's the going to sleep like and waking that. up part is, is, the, is where it's at. Fuck like yeah. That. Great, well, great finish there, yeah. Michael. Well, I hope we en- everybody enjoyed the episode. It means the world to have you here with us. I uh, hope you have an amazing holiday season with your family. Tune in next Wednesday. We got another great Christmas episode. You bet. The final patron pick, yeah. A Christmas Story. Got yeah. to. Also, if you're new to the podcast, we're going to start talking about this. Go back to December of last year. Mm-hmm. Home Alone and Santa Claus are waiting for you, you bet. to be listened to. Some people are like, you should do Home Alone. We're like, we already did. We did it. You got it. Go back and listen to it. There you go. All right, thanks for listening, guys. Please stay in touch with us by following on all of our social media platforms at Confused Breakfast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and Confused Be Fast on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review on the podcast platform of your choice right now. Also, we have merch. You know you want to rep the Confused Breakfast in public. Mugs, stickers, shirts, all kinds of goodies. Go to ConfusedBreakfast.com for a direct link. And don't forget about our voicemail number, 319-804-9596. Links to everything you could ever need from us are in the show notes or at ConfusedBreakfast.com. This includes a way to follow all of us individually in our personal projects that we want you to check out. Mission of the day, tell your friends about us. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast and leave a review of your podcast. Oops. Make sure to subscribe to your podcast. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to subscribe on. Jesus Christ. <laughs> what? what the fuck? To our podcast. Shut up, guys. On your podcast pa- platform of choice. Are you okay? Your, weir- your words are weird. <laughs> Say whatever you want. <laughs> your words are weird. Say whatever you want, man.